Pepe is the fastest going to ever reach a $1 billion market cap. The initial rush is already over, but I believe there will be a second wave. And before I invest my life saving into Pepe, I need to check the code of its smart contract to make sure that there is no scam. Because I don't want to end up like the investors of BitConnect. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I help you to become a professional Web3 developer and if you want to get a full roadmap for what to learn and how to get your first Web3 job, check out my free masterclass, the link is in the description. So the first step is to find the code of Pepe. So I went to Etherscan, I typed Pepe coin and I got several results. So there is only one real Pepe coin and all the other one are scam. But how can we find the real one? So for that, I went to the official website. There was a link to Uniswap where we can buy Pepe coin. And on Uniswap, that's where I find the address of the token. So with that, I went on Etherscan and I found the right contract. And before we dive deep into the code of Pepe, let's briefly discuss how it works. Because if you don't understand this, you won't understand the code. Pepe is a digital asset also called a token. Everybody can own some Pepe coin, just have to go to an exchange to buy some. But what decide the price of Pepe? And why did it go up so much? It's simple, the price of Pepe is just determined by the law of supply and demand. If you have more buyers than sellers, the price go up and conversely. So everybody can buy Pepe on exchanges, but it has no intrinsic value. It's just pure speculation. It's what we call a meme coin like Dogecoin. So Pepe started to go viral on social media and that's because a lot of people are aware of the Pepe character. It's used in a lot of memes and jokes on Twitter and Reddit. And people bought Pepe just for the fun of it. And also a small hope that it might go to the moon. And that's it. That's the only reason why it went up. But who created it? It's a very important detail. Technically, Pepe is a small program called a smart contract. And this smart contract runs on the Ethereum blockchain. And we can verify this with Etherscan, the blockchain explorer of Ethereum. We can see the transactions of Pepe, and we can also see the code of its smart contract. And when we start to look at the code, we see the keyword ERC20. Very important detail. It means that Pepe is a special smart contract. It respects the standard of ERC20. And that's great because this is a template that Pepe is supposed to follow. So the code analysis is going to be easier. So we are almost ready to look at the code. But just before, very quickly, you need to know one last thing. The different phases of the lifetime of the token. There are four of them. The deployment phase, that's when the developer of the token deploys the token to the blockchain. The minting phase, that's when the developer does the initial distribution of token. The creation of the liquidity pool, and I will get back to this later. And finally, the trading phase, that's when everybody can start to buy and sell the token. So we are finally ready, let's dive into the code. So this is the code of PepeCoin, and we will find the constructor. The constructor is the part of the code that is executed during the initial deployment. And that's generally where the minting process happens. And this is what we see in this contract. And during this minting process, we can see that the developer gets all the token of Pepe. But if he gets all the token, how the tokens will be distributed to the public? We need to do more research. So I check in the code and there wasn't any function to distribute the tokens. No airdrop, no nothing. If the answer isn't in the code, it must be in the blockchain. There must be transactions that explain this. So I did some research on Etherscan and I found out that the developer of Pepe sent most of the tokens to a liquidity pool. Liquidity pool? What the hell is that? To understand what is a liquidity pool, first you need to understand the concept of decentralized exchange. A decentralized exchange is a blockchain app where you can buy and sell tokens in a decentralized way. It's basically like a stock broker, but on the blockchain. And behind the hood, a decentralized exchange is also powered by a smart contract. So the Pepe token has its smart contract. The decentralized exchange also has its smart contract. There are many different smart contracts on the blockchain and they can all have different logic. And smart contracts can even interact between each other. But let's get back to a decentralized exchange. In a decentralized exchange, traders can buy tokens in liquidity pools. In each liquidity pool, you have two assets. For example, for the liquidity pool Ether USDT, you can either buy Ether with USDT or you can sell Ether against USDT. If you use a stock broker, it's the same, except that instead of liquidity pools, they call this markets. 
and usually the buying currency is dollar. So you have the market for Microsoft, Tesla, etc. Liquidity pools have one big difference though. Anybody can create a liquidity pool. This is permissionless. And this is what the developers of Pepecoin did. They created their own liquidity pool on a decentralized exchange called Uniswap. Okay, but what does it mean for the token distribution? Did all the tokens of Pepe went to this liquidity pool? And who owns the token in this liquidity pool? We need to do more research. Okay, so this is getting interesting. When you create a liquidity pool, you need to provide the two assets. For example, if you create a pool of Pepe versus Ether, you will provide some Pepe and some Ether to the pool. And you can decide how much. And the ratio will determine the initial price. So I did some research on Etherscan and I found the transaction when the team of Pepe created this pool. They initially provided about 93% of the token supply of Pepe and two Ether. It means that at the very beginning, the entire market cap of Pepe was worth $4,000. But there is a problem. At such a low market cap, the coin is very vulnerable. That's a critical moment because anybody can come in and buy a large quantity of Pepe and you don't even need to be a whale. And if somebody buys too much Pepe, it pretty much ruins the coin because nobody wants to buy a coin that is completely dominated by one person. So the liquidity pool was deployed like this. And a few hours later, surprise, the first buyer of Pepe showed up and they bought 0.5% of the token supply. Is 0.5% too much? Does it make the coin too centralized? That's debatable. But the developers of Pepe didn't like that at all. And in fact, they were so pissed that they did something pretty surprising. If you look at the code of Pepe, you will find a strange function called blacklist. Only the developers of Pepe have the ability to execute it. Hmm, it looks a bit scary. But what does it do exactly? I searched the code and it's used in one place only. But that's a very critical place, the transfer function. Every time someone wants to transfer some Pepe, the transfer function is executed. And inside this function, there is a check to make sure that there is no blacklisted address. The transfer cannot happen if the sender or the recipient is blacklisted. What? This is a huge red flag. How can you call this decentralized? The developers of Pepe can censor any address they don't like. This is insane. Have they ever blacklisted anyone? Yes. Who is it and why? Remember the first buyer of Pepe that I mentioned just before? The guy who bought 0.5% of the total supply? They blacklisted this guy because they thought that there was too much concentration there. This buyer spent $40 to buy his Pepe token and if he had been able to sell his Pepe at the peak, he could have made $8 million in profits. But he got blacklisted and all his tokens got frozen. If I was that guy, I would be pretty pissed. So that's a pretty big red flag, but there's still some hope. Because in the smart contract of Pepe, there is a function to renounce the ownership of the token. If you are the owner of this smart contract and you call this function, you are no longer the owner and you lose all your privileges. And the team of Pepe did call this function. So they are not the owner anymore and they cannot blacklist anyone else. Okay, that's better. But there is still a lot of code to cover. And who knows what we're going to find. So we know that the liquidity pool of Pepe initially received about 93% of the total supply. And all this liquidity was controlled by the team of Pepe. Whoa, that's another huge problem. Because if you control the liquidity, you can do a scam called a rug pool. What's that? When you provide liquidity in a liquidity pool, you also have to provide the two assets. And in exchange, you get a liquidity provider token or just LP token. And at any time, you can redeem this LP token against your liquidity. The way a rug pool works is that you create a new liquidity pool, people buy your token with real money, the supply of real money goes up, the supply of your token goes down, and all of a sudden, you redeem your LP tokens, and in exchange, you get your share of tokens and your share of real money. You get to keep all the real money and everybody gets to keep your worthless coin. So that doesn't look good. And I found out that the team of Pepe burned the LP token, which means that they sent the LP token to an address that nobody controls. It's basically like burning your money. And that's good because the team of Pepe cannot do a rug pull anymore. We're safe. Okay, that's great, but we still have some code to cover because I found another function that poses problem and that can be pretty serious. When you transfer your tokens, this function is called the transfer function. It's a standard function of the ERC20 standard. The standard defines the interface of the function, that's what you see here. But what is inside the function, the implementation, is completely custom. And in Pepecoin, whenever a token transfer takes place, 
it also calls this other function. And this function enforces some minimum and maximum holding amount. For the maximum holding amount, I guess this is an anti-well mechanism to prevent anyone from owning too much. And for the minimum holding amount, I don't really see the point of that. But these constraints are only enforced when this variable is set to true. And we also have this other function where all these values are defined. And this function is controlled by the owner of the smart contract. Alright, so let's go to etherscan to read these values. So here we can see that the owner is the null address, which means that the ownership has been renounced. So that means that these values will be final. They cannot be changed anymore. So in etherscan, we can see that limited is set to false. So the anti-well mechanism is inactive. Okay, that's great. You can transfer your Pepe tokens without any restrictions. So to recap, the team of Pepe renounced ownership of the contract, which means that they cannot blacklist anyone anymore and they cannot change any parameters. And they also burn the LP token, so they cannot do a rug pull anymore. Would I invest in this coin? Yes, I would. I didn't see any bug or scammy code and I'm pretty confident that there will be another pump. This being said, there is another similar token that I just discovered and I think it has even more potential than Pepe. But this will be for another video. If you enjoyed this kind of smart contract analysis, you might also enjoy this other video where I analyze a $1 million bet that was done in a smart contract. See you next time. Bye.